how many of you can say you recycle or attempt to recycle? Okay, cool. Good job. It's a lot of you. So according to the United States Recycling Statistics, taken in 2005, we have um, increased our efforts in recycling since 2003. So it's a good thing. According and according to um, to Sustainable Blog, Blogging in Greener World, out of every 250 million tons of trash that the United States produces, we recycle 82 million tons. So which means that we recycle about 32.5% of our total trash. Um, so today I will describe the process of recycling the most common recyclables. How this topic can relate to you. Um, the sustainable blog states that every person in the United States produces about 4.6 pounds of trash every day. And out of those 4.6 pounds of trash, about 1.5 are recycled. Um, I will cover the process of recycling common recyclables such as aluminum, glass, paper, and plastic. So moving to the first topic, which is the process of recycling aluminum. Um, aluminum is the most efficient and widely recycled of materials. Um, it is first, after taken to a recycling center, it, is go it goes through these um, streams and then these magnetic, um, <coughs> these magnetic, these magnets called called eddy, eddy current magnets pick up the aluminum and these eddy currents um, are rotating magnet fields that, into, that are induced in the electric current around the aluminum cans. So they pick up these cans with these magnets and then they can transport them into other bins. And from these bins, they are shredded and ground into smaller pieces. And from these pieces, they are taken to furnaces. And then after they're taken to the furnaces, they are burned and they are made into sheets. And then from these sheets, they can be made into um, other products. You can, after they after they make them into the sheets, they they can make construction such as windows, frames, and then they're also using transportation like airplanes, trains, and boats, and packaging. Aluminum is mostly in the form of cans and foil and electricity. Since 1945, aluminum has replaced copper in high voltage transportation. Transmission lines, sorry. So, um, moving. Uh, okay, so another point to prove that aluminum is very efficient is because it saves 95% of energy to recycle an aluminum can compared to manufacturing a new one. And then the process of manufacturing, filling, selling, recycling, and re manufacturing an aluminum beverage takes about six weeks. And then because it is so, it saves so much energy. Um, it is, it is recycled a lot, and doing this process does not really change the metal, so you can recycle aluminum um, indefinitely. Okay, um, moving on to the next one. So next, I'll talk about recycling glass. So glass can also be recycled indefinitely because it does not deteriorate the, the glass to do this reprocessing. Um, so the glass is collected through, through um, curbside collection or through bottle spinning. And before, before the glass can be, can be um, recycled, it needs to be sorted by color. So it's sorted into brown, amber, green, or clear glass. And then after it is sorted, it is taken to recycling plants, such as the one you see here. And from in these plants, they are screened for purity and any contaminants are removed. It is then crashed and added into raw material and other melting furnaces. And then from the melting furnaces, they are, all, they are molded into jars, bottles, and also used in construction. And um, they are made into grass balls, which is road-lying material, which, which um, comprises around 30% of recycled glass. And then here's a picture of kind of what happens. So from the jar, it goes into the recycling bin, to sort it, they put it in the truck, they shred it, they burn it, they go back into the jars and back into the Um Okay, moving on to the next one. Our next one is the process of recycling paper. So 50% of all recycled paper in the, 50% um, of all paper is recycled in the United States, which is about 42 million tons. And then, according to the Bureaucracy of International Recycling, um, this is where I got the information from, they take them, after they go into the, into the recycling centers, automated machinery um, sorts them. 
So they can sort them by two ways. They either do it by hand or by automated automated scanners, which are called spectroscope scanners, which um, weigh the materials and they differentiate between glass and metal versus plastic and paper. And then after they sorted the paper and the cardboard and stuff like that, then they have to take they have to manually take uh, take away the cardboard, just like this guy's been taking away the cardboard. And then after they take away the cardboard, they are compressed with um, hydraulic they are compressed with hy hydraulic um, machines into like cubes like these. And then um, from those cubes, so they remove it, they pack it into the block, they are shredded into smaller pieces, and they um, add um, they add it into these bigger these bigger bins and they add water to create pulp and then the pulp is washed and cleaned to create slush and then from the slush they take away any other contaminants such as dirt, ink, plastic or other metals and then they and then they put them in these rollers which could take away all the water that they've added to clean to clean the um, to clean the paper and then after they put them in these rolls they put them into heated rolls to to make a smooth surface, and then um, after they smooth in the surface, they they make these big rolls of paper that have been recycled, and from the rolls of recycled paper, they make products such as newspaper containers, tissue, cereal boxes, or stuff you see here. So moving on to our final point, which is processing recycle processing plastic. So plastic recycling is a process of recovering scrap or waste plastic and reprocessing the material into useful products. So there's many different kinds of plastic, so before they can be taken into these into these recycling centers, they do need to be sorted. So and they sort them by um, a numerical system. So after they after they are sorted by the numerical system, they um, they are shredded into smaller pieces, bales to facilitate handling and transportation. So they are sorted and they're put into these cubes like this. And then after they are transported into other <coughs> other centers that specialize in plastic and recycling plastic, they are also shredded, and they go through a process to remove filth and dirt, and they are put in a furnace. And then after they put in a furnace, they are manufactured into products such as the ones you see here. Um, and then moving on to conclusion. So now you know how common recyclables such as aluminum, glass, paper, and plastic are processed to produce new products. And then the next time you put a bottle, can, or in a recycling bin, you can think about the various products they could be manufactured into. So Blake, tell us what you thought. I really liked your speech. You had a lot of good information. Uh, she had a lot of uh, statistics and things from uh, agencies that support all their findings. And um, it, all her transitions were labeled and very clear. And you could tell where she was going with the speech. Uh, however, the only thing I didn't really like was she relied on her notes a little too much. And when she did look up to away from her notes, she would more look at the screen than at the audience. All right. Well, I would definitely agree with that last uh, uh, comment about the presentation. I, it just seems like 90% of the speech is delivered to the screen. Once you get the slides up there, you, you just sort of look over there and keep referring to them and then look back at your notes and then refer to the screen again. And uh, we might as well not be here. Uh, you need to engage the audience a lot more in the presentation. Uh, organizationally, it's structured into a pretty straightforward topical structure, um, but the movement between the points is really uh, sketchy. It's, it's, it's arbitrary, it's clear, but it's just arbitrary. Well, now let's, now let's talk about plastic. Now let's talk about glass. Now let's talk about aluminum. And it just sounds mechanical, I, like I'm going through a list, an inventory of the things. If I was listening to somebody describe how to pack 
First you put your underwear in. Then you put your socks in. Then you put your pants in. Then you put your shirts in. Then you put your skirts in. I'm going, yeah, and why am I having to listen to this and not just read off a list? It, it needs to be a little bit more personable, and there needs to be something interesting about what you've got here. And it never gets beyond the stage of just being data. It's, it's, it's not bad data, and I like the fact that you included statistics, especially at the beginning, to talk about how the speech, uh, how the subject is growing, how we're being, becoming more effective at doing these kinds of things, how much gets recycled. I thought that that was good. Uh, all the products that get listed, for instance. But there's, there's so many opportunities to make it more interesting and, and tell uh, a, a story uh, that, that it just, I, I'm, I res kind of resent the missed opportunities. Uh, you, you've done a good job at organizing basic information, but turning it into a speech, that's what's missing here. It's, it's, it's got to be something more than just the listing of the data. Because you could just give us a brochure and we get all of the information that you had in the speech there. Uh, it's got to have some personality to it, and that's, and that's sort of what's missing. There were two or three things that jumped out at me that would have been potential topics to develop a little bit more. Uh, the eddy current uh, mag magnets, I'm going, okay, now, that sounds interesting. How does that work? And by the way, that sounds like it might be an application of something that we've heard about in class before you know in fact maybe even today I'm not sure you know so it's one of those things that all of a sudden something might be a little bit more practical and give us some context about how these things are being used because it just it just felt like I said uh, that there's a reference in there but it doesn't get explained and the same thing with uh, later on the spectroscope scanners that you're being used on the paper and the cardboard those kinds of things I, I like the idea of, of talking about those things. I, I also wanted to know how they do the sorting on the glass. I mean, there are things to talk about on each of those points that would have been more interesting than just, and here's a list of the things that can be made out of it, and here's what the boxes look like when they come out of the recycling thing, or here's... Mm, I, 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 I kind of got the idea that there's a behind-the-scenes thing that's going on here, but it doesn't get developed as well as it could. Uh, Everything, you know, like I said, it's it's not that the structure is problematic. It just needs to be uh, a little bit more involving. Use the time pretty effectively. Okay, thank you.